All right. So, bunch of brake lights. What stage do you think we're about to be in? We should be in yellow orange. And we were in white straight to brown. Thankfully, he's okay. Nice looking bomber jacket, by the way. So we have an interstate. Everyone is slowing down and stopping. Everybody's see that right there. One sec. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this part right here. This is, is what I'm talking about. Take a look. This is just a quick pattern. Rec recognizations. That's a word. Big open lane. This truck is behind this red vehicle, and he's gonna move over. Okay. So just look at that for right now. Boom, the motorcyclist would have gotten hit right there, right? Look, everybody's moving over. Okay, so that's typical. So pay attention to that. Now let's pay attention to this black van that's going to be popping up right here. Right here. So that black van. Okay, that's what's going to be hit. Now everyone has stopped. There's a lot of brake lights on the interstate. This is an uncommon thing in a common situation. We need to be paying attention. Nah, nah, nah. I want to use more syllables than I need. Remember, plan our ride. It's like, hey, you know, I'm white stage. What's going on? Oh, crap, bam. Hit the person. We are in brown stage. Complete breakdown of mental and physical performance. And what happens with that? We didn't have a very good uh, total stopping distance. Total stopping distance was terrible. We had terrible perception reaction time. Our braking distance never really changes if we're really good at braking. But our perception was way late. Our reaction was way late. So we just ran out of time. Make sure you guys follow the color code chart. If you see an uncommon thing in a common situation that your gut tells you something's weird, go into orange stage. Roll off the throttle about one to two, five miles per hour and cover those front brakes and start scanning and looking for those escape paths just in case. And once you're out of that situation, your gut feels good again, go back to yellow stage. But right here, that's a no bueno. All right, here we go. Mate was very lucky to be in front in time and go ahead. managed to control the bearing back. Go ahead. Oh, he's on fire! So, one thing you don't want to do when you're on fire is run. Okay, oxygen, you're feeding that fire, it's going to keep going. So stop, drop, and roll. So what you should be doing here is what is called a low side. You should be low siding your motorcycle on per- No, I'm kidding. Kidding. Don't low side your motorcycle. Get off the bike like this guy says. Don't use your hands to pad it out. You think you can just do it real quick? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Unless you're my wife, Nikki, with the Mexican fingers able to flip tortillas, not burn her fingers. I burn mine all the time. At that point, throw sand on it. Throw sand on it or... Oh, they got water. That's good. Water is a great reducer of temperature, which is uh, one of the things that fire needs. It needs, it needs heat fuel, oxygen, and then the combustion, the actual chemical chain reaction. So, there you go. Oh, something caught? Friction caused that. Friction, there you go. Oh, never mind, the muffler caused that. It fell off to the left. So friction can cause it, so rubbing against the tire can cause it, or just straight up heat from the muffler and the exhaust. So that sucks. At least it's not your whole bike, and at least you didn't crash. Good job. Here we go. My nephew, a new rider from Florida, unfortunately crashed on his first trip riding in the mountains of North Georgia. I'm really quick at reading. That's really nice. Anyways, we're going around low side right there. I already, I already knew it. That lean angle is really far down. Let's go back just a little bit. Very, very sharp lean angle. The more you start to go down, the less traction you have. Because traction, you only have so much. When you lean, it needs traction. When you brake, it needs traction. When you accelerate or roll on the throttle, it needs traction. So if we're trying to accelerate super fast here and turn really sharp, good chance of a low side. If we're turning really sharp and apply a lot of brake pressure, good chance of a low side. This is why when you're in an emergency uh, stop and a turn, you want to straighten it up because you're trying to get more traction for that braking. Okay, so this is why I don't like to go super fast on turns. I really don't because I like to save some of that traction. I like to have a little bit in my savings account in case of an emergency. Do that. Okay, I know a lot of people are in debt. You know, I just saw some some analytics on debt, but this person has a massive amount of traction debt. That's what causes a crash. Now look at his head bounce. Thankfully, he has gear. That's easily a concussion. If you don't know what a concussion is, take a look on the far right. Okay, 
Head injury symptoms. Disorientation, nausea, vomiting, vision impairment, loss of balance, and or persistent headache. So when you're going to be like, hey, buddy, you good? Are you good? And he's like, I have the biggest headache I've ever felt. Or he just gets up and starts throwing up. Hey, he's got a TBI, traumatic brain injury. You want to make sure he doesn't have any spinal cord problems and you can watch out for some shocky symptoms. Um, but if he has a traumatic brain injury, you got to get him to the hospital. Get him to the hospital. You don't know if it's a brain bleed or if it was just like a, a, a the bleed is actually stopped because you're going to have contusions. Oof. Moving on. Yeah, he's screaming. James Yoon. Oh, got impacted into the rear. Careless and too confident driving of the driver behind leads to a situation. I'm teaching class. He's not able to brake safely. Come up, come up here, Moto Stars. Teach the class. That person, what stage was that person in? I gave you the answer, everybody. So we're going up to here. Now, what's the light? Uh, I don't understand the light system here, but it looks like red. So went a little too far. Was supposed to stop at that line. Couldn't do it. Did really good progressive brake pressure. But here's the thing. If you're getting to an intersection and you have to slam the brakes and you already know because you did good 360 situation awareness that there is a vehicle behind you and you don't feel like they could stop in time because they have a terrible total stopping distance because you didn't really allow them to have enough perception and reaction time, just go through it if it's safe to do so. Go through it if it's safe to do so. Right now, what we see here is that there's no vehicles. If it's safe to do so, continue on with your day. Serious. Last thing you want is to get hit in the back. Now, if a cop pulls you over and says, hey, you ran a red light, I'm telling you this. I would rather tell him I did not feel safe to stop because that person was right on my ass and I did an emergency break and I felt like they would have hit me. And if they're like, well, I'm giving you a ticket, I would go to court. I'd rather be judged by 12, which we probably wouldn't because it's just a judge at that point, than to be carried by six. Okay, I think a lot of people in the gun community understand that phrase, uh, but that's a no bueno situation. Everybody. Cool Breeze Rider. Here we go. Good job. I like watching Cool Breeze. Oh, he's always witnessing. Does he just like live on his motorcycle? So what are we going to do? Do we have to? Ah, eh, probably not. There could be a little bit of whiplash, but you're not going to be able to do anything. Let's go back a little bit. So there's not much we could do in this situation, okay, as, as a rescuing part, because uh, they have the crumple zone. They got airbags, seat belts. It's their problem, not yours. Uh, there could be any reason for why you're not going to help them out. But if it was a motorcycle rider, that impact is very dangerous for them. Guys, if you like this kind of stuff, we do this every Tuesday and Thursday on this channel at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time live. So make sure you check that out. But if you want to check out some other things like this video right here or this video right here, please do so. It supports the channel. Click that like button, by the way. Check into class. Anyways, I'll be seeing you around.